All right, I think we are live. Let me make this screen go down so I can see. And make sure I'm unmuted. Screen go down so I can see. No, I don't want to hear it. There we go. I always forget to make sure that I am not mute. Jana, if you can hear me, let me know. Jana's always my champion who tells me if I'm muted or not muted and mm -hmm. is the best to have a friend on the inside. Okay, get that other screen up. No, not that one. Hey, we are here live during our first Watch, Learn, Play retreat. Yay. Hello, friends Hello. in the background. Yay. I'm not alone. You can see in the little window in the upper corner, tiny, tiny little window, but we're here with three of our Watch, Learn, Play friends, and we're making the Hitchhiker Journal together today. So we just poured our own palettes. This is part of the retreat as we made our own watercolor palettes. And I'm just going to swatch the colors out, uh, maybe on one side, and then I'm going to play around with watercolors and stencils. And we've been playing with nature a little bit. So I might take some of these leaves from my yard, I mean, from my driveway and add some watercolor over it. So that's the plan. It's a very loose plan, but that's what we're going to do for the next hour. And then we're going to go inside and make dinner. Mm -hmm we didn't get to do that before we started this so so this is the first color that i pulled out is aussie red gold and it is like this gorgeous orangey orangey color it dilutes down really nicely it's a nice mixing color i'm working on strathmore vision mixed media paper this is a 98 pound mixed media paper and it um takes the watercolor beautifully it's not really made for watercolor but it it does good it does she, she handles it she handles the the water which is nice um olive green is the next one i'm going to do i love the way that these colors mix together my mic is over here. This olive green and the um, Aussie red gold, when they mix together, because green and orange make brown, it makes like the perfect autumn color. These are all colors that I feel like I see in some way, shape, or form out there right now. Oh, and I bet I'm really skippy. I'm seeing my hands very skippy in the in the Zoom. Hmm. Well, I do apologize for that if that is what you're experiencing. I've got this phthalo green. This phthalo green is like obnoxious straight out of the tube. It is an absolute must mix color. But look what it does when you mix it with that Aussie red gold. It makes this really, really neat kind of avocado mossy green. So straight out of the tube, phthalo green, obnoxious, not a color in nature. It has to be mixed with something else to make it. Uh, and, and it does beautiful as a mixing green. Did anybody else put that phthalo green on their palette? Yes. It's obnoxious straight out of the tube, but man, it makes a beautiful sort of olive. I almost didn't put the phthalo turquoise on here, but I remembered again, 
the greens are not always one, you know, like they're not always a yellowy green. Sometimes they're a bluey green. And the phthalo turquoise also um, neutralizes the Aussie red gold nicely. So it makes a really great brown. Now I kind of wish I was doing this on beautiful watercolor paper. So I might just pull out some, cause I had some right here by the magic, <laughs> by uh, what are they, what did they used to say? Like the magic of television. I happen to have these right here. And so I'm gonna try these colors swatched out on um, some pretty paper as well. I mean, the mixed media paper is nice, but That Aussie red gold, um, again, straight out of the tube is very orange. And although I am seeing a lot of that orange in my trees out here, um, it really mixes up nicely to make a a beautiful autumn color. And you don't really think of opera pink showing up in this color palette for autumn, but it makes glorious oranges that just feel like they're backlit. So a lot of these colors I picked because they mix so beautifully. Not necessarily that they're gorgeous straight out of the tube. Although they are fun out of the tube too. But Lucy, do we know the name of that bush down there that's doing that I don't. magical thing? I have this bush that is like it's on fire. The most beautiful corals and fiery orangey and pinks. It just looks like a sunset on a bush. And so I've been having fun trying to match those colors or come up with something that's somewhat close. You guys don't have to be quiet back there. <laughs> I'm used to, it's very awkward when you're back there quiet. Cause I'm used to sitting here talking to myself like this the whole time anyway. And I'm used to it now. Like it's not necessarily that awkward for me, but having you here witnessing me do that, it's really awkward. It's really awkward. So you could talk back. <laughs> okay. So one of the other things that I was thinking of doing is because we were doing all this jelly printing with nature earlier I thought that I might take the leaf and just lay it down and use it as a mask. So I'm just taking the paint straight off the palette or pulling some that's over here on the side. This is one of those great times of year where it seems like there's certain times of year where I don't want to make mud. I want my colors to stay clean. And this time of year, it's like, oh, bring on the mud, bring on the mud with all the, you know, oranges and greens mixing together. So 
And that was okay. Let's see what happens when I flip it the other way. That's not bad. And it has me thinking that some of these leaves are perfectly suited to be painted and then stamped with. So some of these, like the walnut leaves from the yard are still flexible and everything. If I, cause this one's very dirty. I'm just going to rinse her off. Well, and then the colors come off. That's what happened. Mm -hmm. So then if I paint the leaf, like this. So this is a leaf right out of my driveway and it's been rainy. So it's kind of damp and it's was sticking to the driveway. And now let's see what happens when I do this. Oh, yeah. yeah. And then even that one with that print is really pretty too. Yeah, so you guys with the extra papers that you have underneath, the, especially the printmaker's paper that really, really luscious next to the last piece. Yeah, yeah this would be gorgeous prints. And if you want any of these walnut leaves, I, I brought in a handful of them or you can go downstairs and yeah. get your own. I remember picking walnuts. Um, it was like a, so I went to high school. My boarding high school was in this area. So this time of year feels very reminiscent of being in high school. And they would take us out to these walnut orchards, or I guess that's what you call them, orchards or walnut groves, walnut groves. Yes. Um, they would take us out to these walnut groves. And our job was to pick up the walnuts off the ground that at this time of year, that it's like the casings are all falling off and it makes your hands completely stained if you're not wearing gloves, right? But these high school students, they'd bus us out there and it was like, a, I, don't, I don't know if we earned money or we were raising money for, I don't know what it was. Well, I didn't see any money to <laughs> change hands, but <laughs> we did the work. And um, this always reminds me about the, these walnut leaves and the way that it looks this time of year. Um, but all of my squirrels hauled all of my walnuts off this year. So I didn't have any to pick up myself. They, they've got them buried for the volunteer walnut grove where inadvertently going to have so these little cards too, you guys, in your, in your bags, like pull up extra, extra stuff. I don't know why I can't see the chat. What happened to me last week too. I think I much prefer um, doing my YouTube lives from here than my San Jose studio, um, the audio and the lighting and everything is set up for this here and not in the San Jose studio. The San Jose studio is very well set up for live teaching, but not streaming. keep catching a glimpse of B walking like in the reflection in the window. And I keep thinking something's moving outside my window. So I'm just going to paint on the leaves now.
it's nice when they're um, wet already and they're not crunchy. So these, these work best with fresh leaves, I guess, or, or freshly fallen. I don't know. That's not really, they're not really freshly fallen, but what would you call this? Like not dried up. <laughs> Yeah, that's that's it. Very moist. Very moist. I was trying to avoid that word. <laughs> Malleable. There you go. Did you? I, yes, from all the rain. Did you guys ever have kids that went through the? phase of like, oh mom, that's such a cringy word. Oh, yeah. And then it makes you, then it makes you as an adult, like, oh, I don't want to say cringy word. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, and it changes so much. It does. I know. It's probably not cringy anymore, but still I I avoid saying I'm in that stage right now. <laughs> yeah. Are you? Yeah. That's that age. And mine are way past that age, but I can still hear it in the back of my mind. You know what I mean? Like they wouldn't say it anymore necessarily, but that's funny. Okay. I am really loving this painting, but watercolor painting the back side of the leaf. The back side is the key because it's got more texture. And um, I don't know if this matters or not, but I'm starting along the spine, the center, and then working out from there. I'm just documenting what I'm doing. <laughs> and I'm adding a couple of colors on there. So it's not just one solid color. And then when I flip it over, and then press it down, I try to put something else over top of it to blot any extra paint up. But so I get the top of the leaf on one and then oh, I am just, I'm loving this. What do you need? My looks like it's not. No. These leaves. Are we getting punchy? It's been a. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what? That's just made purple. You don't like it? Maybe, maybe uh, so you can just keep covering it up. Yeah. <laughs> like, I don't know if we have one so long. You didn't have it. Fresh. No, good. Are you guys still working with acrylic over there? No, only watercolors. Oh, okay. Then you should be able to write over top of watercolor. Yeah, it should have put a lot of color. I was like, you have white space. Oh, got it, got it, got it. Okay. It's more white space. As to or a more diluted, more diluted watercolor. Yeah, I mean, I like what it looks like. It's just—it's not easy to write over. 
any more questions? I like the colors I chose. I think that um, it looks kind of like outside, <laughs> yeah, really good, you know? doesn't it? Yeah. Like in a very abstract way, it looks like what I see when I look out the window. Yeah, the fire bush. Did you make magnolia leaf? Make a good impression. Oh, I haven't used magnolia. All right. Are you talking to me or somebody else? Anybody with if you, yeah, I was going to say, if you're talking loud enough, I think you're talking to me. I'm sure glad I put this thalo turquoise in here because it is such a happy color for me. And it makes a gorgeous green. Yeah. Yeah, impression by We were talking earlier about the synchronicities that we're seeing in, you know, when you start doing prints with nature art, then all of a sudden social media starts feeding you other people who are doing the same thing. And it's like, I don't know if it's listening to us or if it's just that we're all sort of syncing up around the world. And I like to just think that we're all syncing up and everybody's into doing nature prints right now. I think it's the time of year, right? Yeah. So when we're out there tomorrow and find some leaves that have really cool coloration to them, we can practice mixing the colors either on paper or when you could swatch them out, but you can also do exactly what I'm doing right now and paint directly on the leaves. Once you kind of get the colors mixed the way that you want them, or they can be whatever colors, right? You don't even have to try and match, but you could do some more prints like this on some of your papers. I'm really liking the way this is coming out. <laughs> All right, because I like it so much, I'm going to um, get it dry at this point and fold it into the book. And then um, I'll make sure that I have parts on each of the pages that I really love. And you guys take your time to do whatever you like. I just want to get this done in an hour for the recording, but you can keep playing however long you want. And if you want dryers in the top drawer over there by the um, refrigerator.
Are you guys finding any one leaf doing better than another? Yeah, I have a lot of kids. The rhododendron one? Oh, yeah. Actually, I love the walnut leaves. Did you get a print off of the magnolia? I did. I did a half, half like, like the Oh, yeah. It's neat. I think my favorite have been the walnut leaves. Um, they're the, these, they're from the, they're on the driveway. They're all the, Lucy got some full branches with the walnut, like the full stem of them. Because the walnut leaves are the ones that go up the stem and they just go in smaller, smaller, smaller. Yeah. Yeah. They didn't stay though on there. No, but they look so nice. They look really neat that way. Yeah. If we can still find any out there tomorrow, I want to do some prints like that. All right. So orientation wise, I always do mine long ways. So edges together folded in half. And then each edge out to center fold. I have to figure out why I can't see the chat. I wasn't able to see it last week either. And I'm not sure if it's not showing up for anybody or if it's just me. You could see it last week. Because I couldn't. And then I felt like it was bumming me out that I couldn't um, see what was going on, you know? Oh, I got something in my phone. I'll look at my phone and then you look it up. Where are you? Oh. Sweatshirt. Sure. Um, there was a sweatshirt on the freezer downstairs. I think it's downstairs still. And then some glue stick. You can probably have glue stick in your mesh bags. Gorgeous. 
gorgeous. Yeah, I think I might do what you did, Lucy. I might do front and back cover. I haven't been using the insides as much. And so I don't necessarily need all the extra pages. Yeah, I'm really, um, I mean, there's still quite a bit of revenue. Yeah. I love doing little pages. It just feels so secure. And as you said, I think once, I don't know if I'll ever actually cut these apart. Yeah, I I started out thinking that I would more. Okay, and I just said that I would do that, and then I didn't end up. I don't know what I did. I cut it the way that I always do. So I think to to do glue the front and back cover instead of cutting across, I would cut down. So instead of short ways, I would do it long ways. <laughs> so you can hear me clearly. <laughs> <laughs> But can you see the um the yeah, chat? Are reading. they chatting? Yeah. Okay. Oh, yes. Okay. Jana. Oh, hi, Jana. Video is very skippy. I know. I'm sorry that it's skippy, you guys, but I'll tell you what I did is um I am recording this at the same time so that um I can provide a non-skippy version if you want to watch it. Anyways, uh, Barbara asked, I hope you're all having a wonderful time palette. What palette are you using? The colors are so versatile. So, <laughs> okay. We made these palettes up earlier. Um, I pulled out my box of paints. Does somebody want to bring me those paints over here and I can, I can swatch these out. Cause I think that that would be a good thing to document. And I'm going to document it right here in my, I think I remember them, but thank you, Susan. I've got my very own Vanna here. Um, so the, here's the colors for those who are interested. Oh, perfect. The first one is olive green. Olive green is this beautiful looks like sap but it's not sap this is olive so i'm going to write that down as i go and then this next one is Aussie red gold. Which is this just gorgeous pumpkin-y yellowy color. And then it's been a long time since I've made a palette. So this is really fun, you guys. Um, this next one is transparent viral orange. Transparent viral orange looks like this. And it's almost like neon orange, but it's gorgeous mixing. And then we have this really obnoxious green that is called intense green. It's a uh, phthalo green. 
And it's a Windsor Newton. So far, everything has been um, Daniel Smith. This is a Windsor Newton color. Intense green or phthalo green. I'm making a mess on my floor. I keep like uh, splatting my water down there. This is what I needed. Next is yellow ochre. And this was a uh, Windsor Newton as well. This is uh, lemon yellow. which is really bright. I'm not getting it down very um, saturated there. It's also a Winsor Newton color. Lemon yellow. Okay, I'm going to do the other six on this side. And this first one is Thalo Turquoise, which is a beloved color. Like I could swim in that color right there. And I almost didn't put it on my palette. But I did because it's important to have colors that you love, even if it doesn't feel like it's going to go with the season or whatever. Like, I'll make the color that I love work. This next one is Opera Rose. It seems so small. Opera Rose. I didn't have many of my Daniel Smiths here, so a lot of these are um, Windsor Newton from back in the day when we did um, book club and um, we were following, uh, I don't know, probably like Jenna Rainey's book or any of the watercolorists that cited all their specific colors. So this is burnt umber. What is, oh no, this was, um, sorry, not burnt umber. This was sepia. So 
sepia 609. I don't know if that makes a difference, but Windsor Newton. And then this one is a blue. That blue was actually a little rogue tube that I have of this Sennelier. I think it came in um, some sketch box or some sampler or something or other. But this is C-E-N-D-R-E-B-L-E-U-E. -E -E. I think that's the French name for it, have no idea what it is. Cinerous blue. And it's Sennelier. <clears throat> no idea. But I just wanted to try it. And yeah, this one is I can get you back to Portland. Yep. I'm not going to leave you stranded out here. With all these dark supplies. I know. Oh, bummer. Told my family come home. Sorry. Okay. I forget which one this one was. Um, burnt sienna. What was that one that you handed me? Yeah, okay. Oh. And I know, same. But we may decide that we just want to snack and go to bed. I don't know. We're going to make, go down and make salmon and stir fry. Okay. And then the last one, I did lamp black. And I did lamp black because I don't usually use black watercolor, but because you can make a really gorgeous green with by mixing yellow and black. So I wanted to have that on there. And then you never know when you want a little black in your palette. So this is lamp black. Okay, so that's what I have in this setup of 12 colors. Thank you, Barbara, for asking because that encouraged me to document it and um, get it down there. So it's 642. I still have a little bit of time left. I'm going to get this dry and then look at the inside pages and see if I can get some, at least a, a title page on it. What are you doing, Megan? Okay, so we've got our new December stencils. I'm excited to, these are getting sent out soon. So sooner rather than later, the December stencils are out for those who, excellent, Barbara, I'm glad you like the colors. Um, sooner rather than later, the December stencils are getting sent out because, well, because the holidays are upon us and we might as well get them, get ahead of the game there. 
So this is going to be my front cover. I think this is going to be my front cover. Okay, there we go. So we are at November. We were talking earlier about watercoloring with a brush directly through the stencil. So I'm going to try that. <clears throat> Megan looks at, makes it look so easy and I always feel like I make a mess of it. That's well, not too bad. Of course, my brush is absolute, absolute garbage. So let's not use that one anymore for watercolor at least. Okay. Is Monday the 13th? Yes. Monday the 13th. Yeah, this will be 12th, will be Sunday. And. Yeah, there's no numbers, but <laughs> my husband just made me numbers upon my request. So the numbers are coming. It's going to be a third stencil that you can buy. It's not included in the December one, but there will be a number set one through 31. That's this tall, same, same height as the days of the week. So, but I don't have it yet. He just cut it. So I will do my Sunday, Monday, Tuesdays on these because I'm loving using this stencil. Did you knock off the table, BB? Did you knock off the table? Yeah, I guess it works. Watercolor through a stencil if you kind of embrace the imperfection of it, which I love to do 100%. I do want to dry it before I turn the page. And now when you guys are watching this from home, you will envision exactly where, where I am sitting here talking to myself all alone. Yeah. <laughs> <It's so beautiful. laughs> so I think that next year um, in 2024, for sure, I'm doing these you know, big, long quarter that quarterly, I'm doing these retreats where we're doing Friday to Monday, like a full on weekend. This is a full three day retreat, but monthly I want to do, um, still on the second weekend of the month, shorter, you could just drive in. If you lived in Portland or whatever, you could just come out for the day, not necessarily a homestay type retreat, but come in, you know, like a day retreat, um, 
So like a Saturday, Sunday thing, maybe even a, a reception, opening reception Friday night, but do the teaching on Friday, um, uh, Saturday, Sunday. So look for that. Mm -hmm. Me too. Me too. Well, you're going to be out here in the summer. So we'll see if we can align something up for, even if it doesn't align with one of those weekends, you're going to be so close. We have to do something. So yeah, we absolutely have to. So make sure you get me those dates. Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Um, yeah, and then talk about work retreats too. <laughs> I think those would be fun. Let's have a little workday retreat, a little uh, come play. Oh yeah, Barbara Rainey says she'd love to do a day retreat. Barbara lives pretty close to here. She's been out here to, or she hasn't been out here. Barbara has not been out here. Um, but we did meet up in Aurora. I was trying to get the girls to go to Aurora this morning, but they were very happy just hanging out here. And then I put Aline to work. Aline did leaf blowing today. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> not that kind of leaf blowing. The uh, the Makita leaf blowing. Twenty four hours to drive here. Wow. Well, yeah, it's three. Oh, yeah, I never think of it in round trip hours. <laughs> 24 hours. Would you do two 12 hour days? Probably not 12. 12 is tough. 10 is 10 is like my max which is incidentally exactly how far it is from door to door from my house, from San Jose, from San Jose to here is. Everything is perfect. Right. Yeah. I know. And Barbara, beyond just the um, retreats, I will definitely have one day classes out here for locals. So the weekend things are completely separate from having a um, just a standalone single day pop out for a Sunday and do something like we did today. That was so much fun. All the nature jelly printing. We got some fantastic prints amongst us. And I was using my scanner. I still need to scan some more of the ones that came out. Beautiful. Okay. So that. <laughs> Okay, so the date, what did we decide? It was 12, 12, to 18. 12 to 18, thanks. And then is the following week, Thanksgiving? Um, yeah. Yikes. 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 This is why I need that stencil. Oh, Barbara, we should do a handmade book club meetup out here. 
Barbara Rainey's chatting with me on the on the Zoom call or the I'd Zoom call. The YouTube. Okay. Would you? No, absolutely. Excellent. Lucy's gonna be a regular up here. <laughs> All right, November 12 to 18, done. I can't wait to use it this week because of all the beautiful colors, number one, but also it'll remind me of this weekend with all my friends here. So, so love these prints. Fantastic. Well, Barbara, we could definitely fit 15 or more out here. So if you guys want to come out, we'll definitely do it. Um, but look how, oh my gosh, I just love the colors on these. And the, the, just the, they, I, they came out so great. Look at the heart at the bottom of that one. This one? <laughs> yeah. You can't plan this stuff. It just happens that way. How pretty. All right. Well, I'll have a fun time filling it in. Thank you guys so much for watching at home and hopefully playing along. And we will have fun for the rest of the retreat. But thanks for uh, popping on with us. And we'll see you guys later. Have a good weekend. Stop. Share. Fairy guys are on. You guys are on the big screen now. See? Hi, bye. <laughs> Here, wait a second, wait a second, wait a second. We're missing, we're missing Susan. There we go. There we are. All right, bye. <laughs>